Hello everyone, I'm Trusty44 and welcome to this Let's Play of Blades of Avernum. Last episode, we uh, managed to make it back to Cyprus. And we are now discovering just how unfinished this is. While there has been a fair amount of stuff and it has seemed relatively finished so far, once we, res once we actually left the inn, we really started seeing how unfinished it is. Nobody is able to talk to us except the main quest characters, and there's plenty of rooms that are unfinished, empty, items don't have stuff in it, there isn't a, mer a merchant, or there is, but he doesn't sell anything. It is very clearly unfinished now. So let's just see what we can see of the main story. Now let's enter the manse and see if we can find a valet uniform or something. Some way that we can disguise ourselves. Oh, didn't actually mean to go in there. Not yet, anyway. Alright. We'll see if we can find anything. We were told that the laundry room is in the basement, so that's likely where we need need to go in order to find an outfit that we can use. Oh, what's this? Oh, that's just a sleeping official. Gentlemen. This door is locked securely. You cannot touch it. Oh, we found the toilets. That leads to the basement. You feel odd entering the women's bathrooms, but hurriedly step inside anyway. anyhow. Now that you're here, you feel slightly disappointed. It's really not as lavish as it's cracked up to be. <laughs> a servant. This is one of the governor's servants, the men and women who keep the manse running. Servants are often a useful source of information. They know more about the manse than anybody. This woman, however, doesn't seem eager to talk. She does take time from her duties to speak with you, but only because she doesn't want to disrespect somebody who could turn out to be an important guest. How can I help you, sir? What are you up to? Nothing, sir. Well, not nothing, but if you need anything, I could get it for you. Well, is it, where is Alibus staying? The wizard is upstairs in our finest room. I don't really know much about it. Excuse me, I should be on my way. She moves away hurriedly. Yes, I'm checking all these anyway, even though there's almost certainly nothing in there. I don't care. Interesting that there's this back area. Okay, that goes downstairs. That goes upstairs. That's another servant. Let me guess. These are probably the... Yeah, these are the servants' quarters. I know that's meant to be a guy sleeping, but he looks like he's standing in a very awkward position. Yeah, these are obviously the servants' quarters. Okay, more rooms. Oh, interesting. Oh. This small balcony overlooks what the governor's what must be the governor's audience chambers. You sneak closer to the row of windows ahead, careful to keep your head down so nobody below can see you. You reach the windows without any alarm sounding, so you sit down to view what's occurring below you. A tall, gray haired man stands on a dais at the end of the room. He wears blue and green silks, the colors of Cyprus. He's a large framed man and was probably once fairly impressive. Now, though, his face is wan and marked with weariness. The man standing below is just the opposite. He radiates an aura of haughtiness and self-assuredness, as though he were the one who was actually governor here. He is a large man, his blood-red robes barely concealing his girth. The governor speaks. Somehow you can hear him, even through the glass of the windows. I am happy to welcome you to my halls, wizard, Alibus. What is it that brings you to, this fa to the fair island of Cyprus? He speaks calmly and meets the wizard in the eye, although you can feel the effort he it takes for him not to allow his eyes to wander to the array of red-armed men, one of which flanks the governor himself in a not-so-protective manner. I am sure you are. I wouldn't be coming to your fair island if I didn't have an important issue to discuss. The wizard sneers. 
He may be the man standing below the dais, but his air is not of an inferior, and he is in no way respectful. I am concerned, Governor, with your tax revenues this last month. Your numbers are down 20%, which makes me wonder if you are withholding some of the money for yourself. I assure you, Wizard, that I have sent you 50% of our tariffs and canal, and canal taxes as agreed. It is just that our total revenues were low this month. We've been seeing a steady decline in trade traffic. Merchants are beginning to pass Cyprus for cheaper harbors. We have paid what we can. Surely the money your men collect in fines can account for the difference. Talus, Talus, Talus. Alarbus begins in a, in a super salacious tone that would better befit a lecturing schoolmaster. It is not cheap for us to police this island. Men must be fed, arms must be bought, and all for the good of Cyprus. If you no longer want our policing efforts, then say so. But I'd expect a great spike in crime should this happen. Alibus, please, our treasury is all but empty. We don't have enough to pay our own officials, or even to hire tax collectors. We've slashed the city budget to tatters. There is no place for more revenue. Our city has always paid its bills by taxing merchants, and now they're packing up and leaving. Then perhaps, Governor, we need to receive a share of your other revenues. Your income, or farm taxes, maybe. Talus opens his mouth to protest, but Alarbus continues. I hope your revenues will be back on track this month, else you'll be receiving another visit. Farewell, Governor. He spins on his heels and leaves the room. His guards follow, as do several Cypriot servants, to show him to his room. The governor is left alone on the dais, his mouth still sp open in unspoken protest. Finally, he recovers and descends from the dais shakily to leave the room. His guards follow behind him. You notice that his posture seems a bit more hunched than before, another burden to bear. The black-clothed minstrel is the last to leave. He glances up towards the balcony where he sits and nods knowingly. Then Lucan is gone. Didn't mean to see that quite so soon, but... Oh well. Okay, that looks like a dining room or the like. More stairs down. That's just a servant, probably straightening up a bed. Nice touch. Another servant, another meeting room. We made it around. A small woman sits across the counter. She distractedly files her nails as she reads from a ledger that is open on the desk. As you approach, she sets down the file hastily, writes her glasses, and, satisfied that she is presentable, fixes you with a haughty stare. Well, what is it? I have business with the governor. She looks at you doubtfully, then flips through a book on her desk. You don't have a p an appointment, and I doubt you ever will. The governor has more pressing concerns than whatever problem you have. What do you do here? I screen people. Before anybody gets an audience with the governor, they need an appointment. I decide who's important enough to be worthy of his time. He's too busy to see just anybody. It's usually not hard to tell who is and isn't going to get an appointment. You, for example, don't have a chance. What do you think of the governor? Cyprus is suffering, but the governor has done the best he can given the circumstances. He's led our state well in the past, and before the order's arrival, anybody you asked would have agreed that Talus was an excellent governor. Now, though... Well, he won't be removed from office, the order wouldn't allow it, but he's lost the support of the council and the love of the people. What can you tell me about the order? I have nothing to say about the order that I'd be willing to say out loud. That is to say, nothing that would result in possible jail time. The guard holds out his halberd to stop you. The governor has retired to his quarters. Nobody is permitted in the audience chamber. You step away obediently. Huh. That's just a blood mage. Curious. Alright, let's take a look downstairs. Descend the stairs. So down in here somewhere, we'll find not just the servants, but also the laundry room. 
we'll be able to find a new outfit. Oof. Cobwebs. Stop that! Thank you. These are the manse's kitchens, as large and bustling a facility with the important task of cooking for hundreds of people. You easily go unnoticed here, lost among the hurrying scullions and blustering chefs. This young woman scuttles about the kitchen, following orders barked at her by one of the two cooks. She ignores you when you first approach, but then thinks better of it. If you're looking to place an order, sir, please speak to one of your attendants, or to one of the chefs. I can't really handle any complaints or requests. Alright. Oh, this is a kitchen. At least. And that's the way back up. This is the laundry room. The floor is strewn with bags of laundry, but what first appears to be simply a mess of silks and cloths is actually well organized. Each bag is labeled for a separate room and stacked with bags from the same area. Your mission is to somehow gain access to Alarbus's room, which it will probably entail finding a disguise. It seems like an obvious place to look. The tag on this sack reads Staff Quarters. You pull it open to find several grimy uniforms. The emblem of Cyprus is stitched on the breast in gold thread, but everything else about these uniforms is drab. These could come in handy in your efforts to move through the manse unnoticed. You curse your luck for finding an unwashed sack, but disregard the stink and pull out a uniform. Doesn't look like anyone is watching. Servant's Library. Alright, well... That's that. A regular cloak. Well, at least with the servant's library, we can sneak through this place. Are there any doors over there? Ah, uh, no, there are not. It's hard to tell. And what's down here, I wonder? A long path leading to... Ah, the prisons. can't talk to him. There's nobody in the prisons. Well, on the plus side, we found it. I don't see what that's even going to matter, but we found it. Okay, that's the way back up. And more servants' quarters. Doesn't look like there's anything else down here. So let me try putting on the servants' library. Climb the stairs. I wonder if while wearing the servant's library... Nope. Can't get in. Alright. Well, let's go up. Climb the stairs. You're almost there, but now you've hit another roadblock. Two guards stand in front of a set of double doors, presumably to Alarbus's quarters. You won't be able to sneak into his room, and they'd immediately realize you aren't one of them. You'll have to find another way to spy on the wizard. Two guards wearing armor emblazoned with the emblem of Cyprus keep watch on this, of this corridor. As you approach, they hold out their halberds to impede your progress. One of the two looks you over, then speaks. You are not one of the governor's private retainers, and I have not received any orders to allow you to pass. Please leave now. Now this is a big, impressive hall. That goes back down. Sure, descend for a moment, because... Okay, I can't go in that way. Never mind. Climb. Okay. Two guards wearing armor emblazoned with the emblem of Cyprus keep watch of this corridor. As you approach, they hold out their halberts to impede your progress. One of the two speaks. The east wing has been closed to all but Wizard Alibus's retinue. Man's staff are not welcome there. Would you please let me pass? The guard shakes his head. What the hell would you want to go near those guys for anyhow? Looking for a flogging? I wouldn't care, but if I let you through, I'll be the one to pay. Hmm. I mean, we have something, but I don't see how this is going to help us. I mean, that 
that's just a cloak. And these are servants' livery, which isn't helping me at the moment. This washerwoman isn't dressed like the other servants you've seen in the manse. She wears dreary rags instead of the livery of the governor's servants. Apparently, the servants who are out of sight of the manse guests don't have to be presentable. She's a large woman, arms strengthened by hauling and scrubbing bags of dirty laundry. She turns to speak with you, but her hands keep washing methodically. What is it? What are you doing? She looks at you incredulously for a moment, but quickly recovers and shakes her head. Apparently, idiocy amongst guests of the manse is an uncommon. I wash clothes. That's my job. If you need something, you should speak to the upstairs servants. Where can I get some uniforms? Why are some of the guests complaining they need their clothes? I'm telling you we're washing as fast as we can. You upstairs folks just don't understand how much work we do down here. Okay. So... Well, she looks different. No, she's the same. Uh, this young woman scuttles about the kitchen, following orders baked at her by one of the two cooks. When she sees one of her fellow servants, she takes a moment to speak with you. Are you looking for something? We're kind of bogged down right now with all the demands from the order, but if you need anything, just tell me. She seems glad for this excuse to shirk her cooking duties for a few moments. What do you know about Wizard Alibus? I hear his retinue has been giving the upstairs servants fits. We're lucky in this way, at least. We have to cook for the snobs, but at least we don't have to deal with them. I wasn't actually looking for food. Oh, just here to chat? Well, I should really be getting back to work. She shoots a glance over at the two cooks, and seeing that neither is looking her way, turns back to you. Though I suppose I could spare a few minutes. Okay. A rather large, middle-aged man paces around the kitchen. He carries himself with an imperious air, and surveys the kitchen like a king would his kingdom. Occasionally, he spots something displeasing, and promptly shouts in an aid to make it right. You there, tend that pot! It takes you a few moments to convince him you aren't one of his aides. Oh, you have a message of some sort. A request from a guest, perhaps? No, then why are you here? Leave me, I'm busy. Okay, then. Let me try talking to one of the other servants. This is one of the governor's servants, the men and women who keep the manse running. At first he seems annoyed that you are disrupting, but when he sees that you too are apparently a servant, he warms up. Hello there. I don't think I recognize you. Do you work upstairs, perhaps? What are you up to? Oh, the usual. Working my ass off slaving over this place. You want break or something? You don't seem very busy. Lucky bastard. Well, where is Alibus staying? I don't really know, really. I hear that he's been terrorizing the upstairs servants, and the whole manse is walking on tiptoes, but I don't know where he's staying. Yeah, upstairs. We talk to one of these servants up here. This guard wears the armor of the militia of Cyprus. He, uh, he alertly keeps watch on the lookout for any intruders. He looks you over as you approach, assuring himself that you aren't causing trouble, but doesn't spare the time to converse. At least here in the governor's manse, the men of Cyprus keep watch, and the order seems content to leave this small area of jurisdiction. The sign on the door says, Occupied, and you can hear somebody on the other side. You could break down the door. The, flims the flimsily lock couldn't hold you out. Why you'd want to, however, is debatable. From the sounds coming from the other side, you gather that there are more pleasant places to be. You kick down the door, the flimsy lock is easily shattered by the force of your blow. The stall's occupant, however, isn't at all pleased by your intrusion. He scrambles to cover himself with his red robes. Order robes. You were just about to hurriedly excuse yourself when your eyes caught on to those robes. This is exactly what you were looking for. Unfortunately, the wearer isn't considerate enough to, to hand them over to you. Instead, he begins to ready a spell. The mage finally ceases to struggle as you continue to rain blows on him. You step back to survey your handiwork. A bloody mess of a man with his robe still hiked up around his waist sprawled on the toilet. Not a flattering way to go. You reassure yourself that he probably deserved it. You hurriedly strip him of his bloodied and somewhat soiled robes and close the door to the stall behind you. Thinking quickly, you flip the occupied sign and scrawl on the back, Closed for maintenance. Do not open for any reason. Really stinky and gross. You 
Calmly wash your hands in the sink before leaving. Now dressed in your spiffy new order robes and feeling somewhat like a badass. Okay. So now we have order robes. Oh, wait. There we go. Alright then. I think I should drop some of this stuff since I'm not even going to be able to sell it. I'll keep the armor just in case. Okay then. Hmm. Alright, moving on. Can't talk to him. Well, let's head up. Climb. This is one of the governor's servants, the men and women who keep the manse running. This man is a particularly fine specimen of the manse's staff. His livery is spotless, and the polished brass buttons sparkle. He must attend to the manse's most important guests. He doesn't visibly cringe when he sees your robes, but he can sense that he is perturbed by your presence. Sir, if you'd please return to your quarters, it would make it easier to serve you. I apologize for any delays. Please be patient. I assure you we're trying our best. What is your job? I serve the manse's most important guests. Like you, sir. Is there anything you need? Where is Alibus staying? He is staying in the diplomat's suite. Our finest accommodations in the East Wing. You and the rest of his retinue are also staying in the East Wing. I hope you're comfortable. Uh, two guards wearing armor emblazoned with yada yada. The East Wing has been closed to all but Wizard Alibus's retinue. One of the guards recites. Suddenly he notices your robes. Uh, I mean, I hadn't seen that you were one of his men. So sorry. Would you please let me pass? Oh yes, certainly, sir, certainly. Didn't mean to, to impede you in any way. That wasn't my intention, just a simple mistake. Sorry again. The two guards step aside to let you pass. Okay, then. You hurry past the two guards, your face averted to be sure they don't get a good look at you. Once you're past, you're here as you heave a sigh of relief. As long as they don't see your face, your uniform should be enough to fool them. So, in other words, don't speak to anyone. Enter the room? Yeah. There's nothing here. Leave the room. This appears to be the limit of how far we can go. Uh, let's see. Governor Talus is not in his quarters at the moment. None are permitted within, even the order. I am sorry for the inconvenience, but I cannot allow you to pass. Apparently your robes won't get you everywhere. Seems like this may be it. Not sure what I'm supposed to do in here. Well, you know what, since we're staying here, let's see what happens when we use the teleportation rod. You look over the teleportation rod carefully. For what? You aren't certain. You are certainly no expert in such devices, but at least this one doesn't have any glaring flaws. You seriously contemplate the wisdom of using a sketchy teleportation rod, especially after your last experience. After much internal debate, you decide that if it's your only way out, you'd, you'll just have to try it. Resolved, you act quickly before you can change your mind. You press the only button on the rod, a bright red one in the center of the shaft, cringing in anticipation of your almost certain death. Nothing happens. You press the button again. Then again. You smack the rod against your palm, but to no effect. Suddenly, you notice words appear in the crystal tip. Too much local interference requires more suitable location. What a jip. This thing probably never worked in the first place. Maybe it's for the best. At least it didn't kill you. Okay. Oh, oh, there we go. You reach the end of the narrow crawl space. 
The viewing hole you are looking for is well hidden, little more than a small indent in the otherwise smooth marble. You put your eye to the hole and see that it does indeed look into Alarbus's quarters. You chuckle silently at the thought of servants using this to peer in at their unsuspecting guests. Very clever. A thin, gossamer tapestry hangs over the hole, but you can easily see through it into the room on the other side. Alibris stands in the middle of a complex series of runes that he must have drawn on the floor. The servants will love that. He sets a small crystal in the center of the pattern, then steps out. He stands on the edge of the rune, watching the crystal expectantly. The crystal flashes, and suddenly the flickering image of a black-robed mage stands in the center of the pentagrams. The wavering hologram is accompanied by a soft but commanding voice, presumably the wizard's. Do you have anything to report, Alibis? The voice isn't familiar to you, and his face is obscured by the cowl of his robe so that you cannot identify him. I just visited with that sniveling dog, Talus. You should have seen his face when I told him to increase his tax revenues. Priceless. And his whining. The black-robed mage listens impatiently as Alaris revels in his earlier bullying of the governor, but eventually interrupts. I do not care about this foolishness. Do not bore me with your asinine tales. If it is your will to run Cyprus into the ground, then do it, but spare me the details. You know what it is that I was inquiring about, but allow me to refresh your memory. The Fugitive. Have you found the Fugitive? Alarbus, somewhat cowed, answers shakily. Well, uh, no. We haven't seen any sign of him. We've been on high alert, Master. I'm sure we would have found him if he's here. There was an attack on an attack on one of our forces, but we suspect it was local rebels. And when were you going to tell me about this attack, Alarbus? The Major's impatience is growing, and the trembling Alarbus is growing increasingly fearful. It... Well, it didn't seem terribly important. We, uh, lost a squad of troops that was guarding a bridge. None survived to tell who was responsible. But I assure you this destruction was beyond the skill of an apprentice mage. Local rebels, for certain. Might I remind you, wizard, that you are not dealing with another lackey hedge wizard. He has received conclave training. Do not underestimate him. The mage speaks in a slow but harsh, lecturing voice. Also, it just so happens that we finally trace the teleportation trail, and it leads straight to your worthless island. Do not tell me that he is not here. He is. You have simply failed to find him. How many of them are there? Just one apprentice. He couldn't have destroyed that force at the bridge. Two of them teleported out of their tower, but the teleportation spell was interrupted. It seems that their trails soon split. It has been a nightmare trying to trace them. The spell threw them on such a violent and haphazard course. At least one of the trails ends at Cyprus, of this we are sure. The second trail has been more difficult to follow, and we do not know where it wound up. It is possible, though, that it too ends at Cyprus. I... Well, if only I'd known sooner, I would have redoubled my search. I would have... I... Well, if only I'd known sooner, I would have redoubled my search. I would have... Your excuses are beginning to tire me, Alibus. If that worthless rabble that you call mages can't handle one apprentice, then you will have to put aside your coin counting and do it yourself, if you are still capable. His teleportation rod is ruined. He has no way out save by ship. Do not let him escape Cyprus. Allow me to repeat, do not let him escape Cyprus. Capture the fugitive and bring him to me. I will suffer no failure here. If you do not think you can handle this, I will come and deal with it myself. And you don't want to get want me to have to get involved. Alarbus looks like he's been physically struck. He stammers excuses, apologies, explanations. But the hologram has already disappeared. The wizard stands frozen in shock for several moments, then finally wipes the sweat from his pale face. He bends to pick up the crystal, then leaves the room. You can hear him yelling at subordinates even through the heavy doors. Well, that's interesting. So we are a fugitive, and they are after us, and they know we're on Cyprus, meaning we have to get off. But we still don't know 
where Aaron is. He might be here, or he could be somewhere else. They don't know. They know the teleportation rod is ruined, so they know we're trapped here. And the teleportation rod we have is no good. So we need to find something that we can do in some way out. But that'll be in the next episode. So until then, I'm Chester44, that is Artemis. This has been the Blades of Avernum Let's Play, and I shall see you all next time.